Okay, welcome to the second in this series of the Hyper-V uh, installation videos. Uh, we're now going to uh, go through the installation of failover clustering on Windows Server 2008 R2 and uh, the process of actually creating the cluster. So, first off we need to go to the server and uh, install failover clustering which in 2008 R2 is a feature. So if we select features, add features, failover clustering, click next and install and we'll wait for that to finish. And as you can see, finished, no, uh, no reboot necessary. Let's just check it's actually installed, go back to features, there it is, failover clustering. So, now let's go to start admin tools, failover cluster manager. We've already installed the service onto all the other machines that we're going to involve in the cluster. Now the first thing you need to do is validate the configuration. If you're going to require support from Microsoft, you have to run validation um, to ensure that your all your servers uh, meet the requirements. So click on validate and click on the next. Then we're going to enter the servers. So we're going to browse for all of them at the same time. So these are our five servers we're going to use in the cluster. Click OK. What it will do now is go away and verify that failover clustering is installed on all of them. So that's done, that's OK. Click on next. Now you've got a choice here, you can run all of the tests, which if this is the first time you've done it, then uh, that's definitely the recommended way to go. Or you can uh, run selected tests if you've added new hardware or anything like that. So we're going to go back, run all the tests, click next. These are all the tests it's going to run, tests for the BIOS, storage, network, um, MPIO, so the multi Microsoft Multipath. Um, click on next and away it's going. Now that is going to take quite a long time, especially with five uh, servers in the cluster. So we're just going to fast forward the video slightly to the end and so you can see the results. Hey, welcome back. We've uh, finished the validation and as you can see um, up here in this uh, the top of the dialog box it says completed successfully. Uh, appears to be suitable for clustering, however you should review the report, which basically, clicking this button here, goes to the report. And as you can see, two areas have got uh, warnings on, so let's uh, drill down into those. Networking, and validate IP configuration just here. Lists all the NIC cards installed on all the servers. And here's the problem, everything in, in yellow is uh, is a warning and as you can see we've got um, multiple cards on the same subnet, uh, multiple adapters on the same subnet. Now, the reason behind this is obviously that this is going to be a Hyper-V server so therefore we've got multiple NIC cards in it all on the same subnet. Um, so we can actually ignore this. This section down here shows us that uh, we haven't got a defined default gateway as we're only just setting the system up at the moment then um, we haven't got a default gateway basically because we haven't set one up yet so we can ignore that as well. So let's go back into the report again and have a look what else is wrong. Uh, storage, okay the validate Microsoft MPIO based disks and that shows us that uh, we've only got one usable path to the storage target. Um, that's actually on all the nodes so we may need to go back and actually have a look at that and correct it. But for the purpose of this demonstration, what we're going to do now is finish this. And you can see nothing's changed. No alterations in the screen. You wouldn't even actually know you've done it. Um, so let's go create the cluster. To create the cluster, click Next. Uh, we need to add in the server names. So what we're going to do is go to SRV Hive. Check the names. Select all of the actual servers we want in the cluster. Click OK, it'll actually go away and validate that the failover service is actually running. Click on Next. We need to give the cluster a actual name, so 
we're actually going to call this hypercluster as we've got two network cards um, one assigned to what is our private network address the 172 and then we've got another network card the 192 address which is assigned to the iSCSI we don't obviously want to use that address for the management of the cluster it because we've got multiple IP addresses it can't pick one up um, and we haven't got DHCP set up on the system at the moment um, so we basically have to give it an address in this case we're going to use 1.49 because that is the first usable address before the actual IPs addresses are assigned to the cluster so click on next it will validate those settings give you a quick uh, confirmation summary click next and it will create the actual cluster and we're finished so nothing wrong with the report everything's successful click on finish and then you've basically got over here in the management console the actual cluster uh, so we've got the nodes to list all the five servers the cluster networks um, storage you can see there's got available storage here um, what we want to use for our quorum disk and then the other one which we want to use for the actual lo um, storing of the virtual hard drives no services or applications actually put in at the moment now you notice from the storage that it hasn't actually picked out um, the disk to use as a quorum so we're going to go to um, right click on the hypercluster configure cluster quorum settings click on next and we want to use node and disk majority um, which basically will sustain two failures of the nodes and uh, a one node if the disk witness uh, goes offline or fails so we're going to click on that one click next which one do we want to use well obviously the smallest one click next and we're finished so there you can see now it's picked out the cluster um, quorum disk and using the smallest one there we are we're finished um, that's the cluster created um, I'm going to do another post um, video blog on the cluster shared volumes um, which I will look at in a moment